So I'm going to start things off just by explaining a few techniques that I use um, to get the smooth blends. Uh, I get a lot of questions about how do you get smooth blends um, and really it comes down to a couple of tricks that I use uh, to get the, the paint to transition nicely between really in some cases, in most cases really with my painting, um, quite high contrast in colours. I don't tend to like to use too many intermediate colours because it means I've got to remember more in the recipe and it's just more layers down on the, on the model. So I'd rather transition colours um, quickly using a blend rather than lay down too many layers. I've got a bit of plastic card here, just scrap plastic card that I'm going to paint on. Um, just to make the paint stick, I've just sanded it a little bit to get a little bit of rough texture and it. it basically behaves like a, a primed model. Um, I've brought out a little bit of the Vallejo uh, black grey here as a nice contrasting colour um, to the white. And I've laid a bit onto my palette here as you can see. Uh, and just to give you an idea of the consistency that is now, it's not super thin. It's thin enough for now um, for this sort of work to demonstrate some principles. So firstly I guess I want to just show you um, laying the paint down. I'm typically going to be using the length of the brush. Um, one technique to blend that is to then come in with the freshly uh, washed brush and just sort of taper the edge off. Um, this is typically called feathering, although in recent years people have started calling it um, two brush blending by adding a second brush. I don't use a second brush, I'd rather clean my brush. Uh, other people prefer to have two brushes, one that's just damp with water and one that's read with, with paint. Um, I find that I'm a bit too klutzy and would just drop the brush. It takes a bit more practice. Um, so feathering edges like that could work really well uh, just to get you a nice transition fairly quickly and easily and that's probably the technique I use more than anything else. Now if I water this paint down just a little bit more just to the point where it's more like what people tend to call milky. See where it's pulling in at the edge there on the, on the palette. Um, you can also do a blend while you actually paint by moving the brush in a certain way. So I typically typically get uh, typically going to do here is just sort of drag it into where I want it to be um, centered, most most opaque, and the edges become then the the bleed out. And then you can also feather the edge more if you want to, just sort of bring that bleed that out further. And this is how you can do things like spot highlights on a figure. Um, though obviously I'm going the wrong way here and darkening it. You can also notice that if you ever move paint where you don't want it, just clean it up afterwards. Um, basically, the best painters out there haven't learnt not to make mistakes, they've just learnt how to fix the mistakes they made. Um, everyone makes mistakes, don't let a mistake hold you back. Uh, I make plenty of mistakes myself. Basically all these techniques you can use for, for different sort of applications. Uh, if I bring a second colour in, I'm just going to grab the, uh, I believe it's pale pale blue grey or something like that. It's actually rubbed off. I can't read it anymore. I've been calling it pale blue grey for a while so I hope that's it. I hope that's right. Um, just as a contrasting colour, I just want to show you um, how to wet blend. It's another popular technique. I used to use it heaps. I don't use it as much anymore because I find with the infinity figures in particular the details are very small um, and so you don't have the area, the surface area, to really wet blend as well as you, you normally would. Um, on something like a Space Marine, it's much more valid because you've got those big surface areas. So normally I'd lay down a base coat of whatever colour I wanted to blend up to or blend down to, or like a mid-tone in between. Um, and then once that's dry, you can come back in with both colours and mix your blend through. Wet blending, because you're using two paints, both wet and mixing them together, does give a different effect to painting a colour over the top of an already dried layer and blending it down just because you're mixing paint so it'll tend to give you a more vibrant colour. Okay so I've just gone through and applied another thin layer of the dark grey down onto the tile here. Um, gone all the way to the edges because I want to actually highlight along the edge. Um, with the wet blend I'm basically going to apply the base colour up to about where I want the uh, lighter colour to be. Quickly grab the lighter colour and then apply that in a line where I want it to be and basically blend the two together. That's dried a bit so I didn't get enough on my brush. 
and basically you can work that back into the darker color in this case and you can add more dark if you need to and basically you're mixing it to and fro you can see that I'm moving the brush um, left to right rather than down the length of the bristles here um, basically that's because it works the paint in nicely when using this technique um, then you can always go back in and just grab that edge if you've overbrushed a little bit like I did there you can always just brush that in with a feather to bring that back in um, there's another one I want to show you with the light color here if I'm doing an edge highlight I'm typically going to run my brush along the edge like this don't worry too much about it quickly get the paint off and then just basically work that edge right up to the edge and because I've got a wet brush and I'm working into it the paint will naturally fade in towards the dark edge there um, you can get a really fine edge highlight with a feather on it by doing that because by pushing the brush along while you're moving left to right um, right up to the edge there you're basically building up paint and you can see it's even happening here with what's left on the brush you're building up the, uh, the, the paint every time you move that left to right or up and down in this case and you can see it builds up with very little paint you can get a really nice sharp edge on that to give another example of the wet blending with some other paints that are a little bit more uh, different I'm just going to apply the yellow here as the base coat I'm applying the yellow because uh, I'm going to basically blend a purple into it just for fun and yellow as you can see goes on streakier than purple is typically going to so I'm getting the um, base coat down with a few layers of the yellow here that is um, not going to apply as well getting that smooth and then I'm going to tackle the blend with the purple over the top of it and I'm now doing the over the top sort of example of wet blending with my purple straight onto that um, purple is actually a really good color with yellow but not straight up like this you normally mix them together to get your transition and you can see just with a bit of work just loading with some more yellow here to smooth that out you can work that in to a pretty decent gradient 